series hosted by Bear County's Small Business and Entrepreneurship Department. This morning, May 4th, we are excited to bring you this in as part of the series, the U.S. Small Business Administration and the UTSA Small Business Development Center's Accelerator Business Recovery Program. We have two excellent presenters this morning for Tony, uh, uh, Mr. Anthony Ruiz, who serves as the district director of the San Antonio District for the U.S. Small Business Administration, and Terry Williams, who is the uh, Associated Regional Director um, for the UTSA SBDC Accelerator. We're going to start this morning presentation uh, by Mr. Ruiz, who has been a dynamic leader in this community. Uh, he transferred from Washington, D.C. He has run the 8A program for SBA and done a numerous uh, outstanding work here since he has been on the ground here in San Antonio, San Antonio District. His presentation will be followed by Terry Williams, uh, who is leading the government um, contracting center as well as the SBDC accelerator at UTSA Small Business Development Center. Uh, with that, we'll get started with Mr. Ruiz. Thank you. So James, let's show our staff. So you'll see who's responsible at the end of the day uh, for Bear County. If we can go to that, this is our team here at Bear County. If you have any questions, you wanna follow up with any of us, we're always available and there is our website. That will be popped into the, to the chat room as well. So let's get started with the SBA uh, webinar. Thank you very much, Renee. Good morning, everybody. Before we begin, uh, let me give you a heads up. Uh, I spent the weekend sending emails to uh, all our resource partners and stakeholders. It's over the weekend, our agency sent out messages to 5 million individuals, actually over 5 million, informing them that the Office of Disaster Assistance has, uh, will this week be depositing the advance payments under the emergency, uh, the economic injury disaster loan. And unfortunately, they do not have the software to inform the recipients of those payments. So please, during the week, if you applied for the IDO loan and, uh, and, it, and you have a serial number confirmation receipt for that, then check your uh, checking account during the week to confirm the deposit. And uh, let us now begin. Next slide, please. Our agenda, we're gonna cover the Paycheck Protection Program. That is round two is alive and well. The idle loan advance, as well as the loan itself, the SBA Express Bridge, uh, Bridge Loans, and the SBA Debt Relief Program. The, uh, and the resource assistance from the SBA and our resource partners. Next slide. All of this is based on the CARES Act and uh, to, for conserving time. I won't go more into that. And uh, if you cannot get these slides through this presentation, they are on our website, sba.gov slash TX San Antonio. Next slide, economic injury disaster loan. This is funded directly by SBA as a disaster loan. And uh, if you need confirmation or you have not received a serial number for the, the confirmation number for your application, please email uh, the Disaster Customer Service Center and, uh, or the 800 number. Next slide. The Economic Injury Disaster Loan is a loan up to two million, no payments for 12 months. And uh, small business and uh, private nonprofits are eligible. It provides a 3.75 flat interest rate for small businesses and 2.75% fixed uh, for the life of the loan for nonprofits. Long-term repayments for COVID crisis will be up to 30 years, but that depends on the amount of the loan. For example, if the loan is only 100,000, then it may be only five years. It may be used for fixed debts, such as your company's credit card debt, your accounts payable, payroll, and other bills affected by the disaster, and your normal operating expenses, including your cell phone, utilities, so on. 
Next slide, please. Additional details, there's no cost to apply. No obligation to take the loan. You could take the advance for up to 10,000. You don't have to take the loan. And it's not intended to replace your lost sales or profits. It's to cover your business expenses to recover. Amount is determined by SBA from the information you provide. And the existing SBA disaster business loans do not make you ineligible. And the loans, your pre-existing loans cannot be consolidated under this program. Next slide. The uh, personal guarantee requirements, none if the loan is under 200,000. And most of the loans are averaging below that. If over, then guarantee from all 20% or greater owners for your company. Collateral, if over 25,000, it requires this loan requires collateral, but SBA will not decline for a lack of collateral, but requires a pledge of what is available. And it does not require primary residence in Texas. It's a credit, if you have credit elsewhere, requirement is waived by the CARE Act. Next slide, the loan advance. There's within this, it's, it's separate from the loan itself, within the application, it's, it's a question to you and you check the box. The loan will advance economic relief to businesses that are currently experiencing a temporary loss of revenue. The loan advance does not have to be repaid. It ends up being a grant. It provides up to $1,000 per employee. If you're an independent contractor or a 1099, it includes you. And the advance may be available even if your IDO application was declined or is pending and will be, and again, the advance will be forgiven. Next slide. After applying, the loan processing decision information is verified. You will be asked for more info from the SBA disaster loan officer. Uh, forecast projections completed to determine the IDO amount. A loan officer will contact you. Decisions normally take up to four weeks, and when there's a, uh, a heavy load, it, it could take as much as two months. Loan closes and funds disperse. You sign and submit the loan documents. Initial disbursement of 25000 within five days. A case manager will be assigned who will help you with the rest of this. And uh, a recommendation, if there's a long wait for this, or even in anticipation of that, I recommend seek an SBA disaster bridge loan and then include that within your IDO loan and uh, to pay that off for you. Next slide, SBA Express Bridge Loan. This is funded through SBA Express lenders. The uh, design to supplement the agency's direct disaster loan capabilities. If you have an urgent need for cash, use this. And my recommendation is as soon as you uh, apply for the IDLE, uh, apply for the bridge loan. And uh, it can only be made by Esprit Express lenders. And uh, you must have been in operation when the disaster commenced. It must meet all other 7A loan eligibility requirements. The uh, EBL loan must be structured as a term loan not to exceed seven years. It does not involve a revolving loan and maximum amount is 25,000. Not required to take collateral for the bridge loans. And then again, uh, inform the lender you want this structured so that it will be paid off by the idle loan because there you'll get a, a lower interest rate. Next slide. This is the list of banks and, uh, that are offering the bridge loan. And not on this list is uh, Lift Fund and People Fund. The if you uh, want to see uh, the list online, and you could go to the coronavirus website, and navigate, and it'll take you to the uh, the Express Bridge Loans, and, and there you just enter your zip code, and it'll show you all the lenders near your your office or home. Next slide. The SBA debt relief options. The debt relief program uh, will provide a reprieve to small businesses as they overcome the challenges created by the health crisis. The uh, 7A loans, the new 7A loans, SBA will pay 
the principal and interest of new loans issued prior to September 27, 2020. Current 7A loans. SBA will pay the principal and interest of current loans for a period of six months. And by current loans, those made after September 27, existing disaster loans. These are from uh, the, the floods and, uh, the, and the, the fires in Austin and uh, that in fact impacted our area and the hurricanes. SBA will defer existing loan payments through December 31, 2020 automatically. You don't need to request the deferment. The deferment will not cancel any establishment of pre-authorized debt, debit, or recurring payments on your loan. Next slide, please. The Paytech Protection Program. The Paytech Protection Program will provide capital to keep employees on payroll and small businesses operating. You could start with the lender commencing April 3rd. You can do both the idle and the paycheck, and I encourage you to do both. And uh, however, for you cannot use them for the same purpose. And what I mean by that, the payroll protection program can become a grant to you if you apply at least 75% of that loan to your payroll. And it's not just gross payroll, but it's payroll related expenses as well. And um, and you must keep your employees on payroll for at least eight weeks. 25% can be applied to your business expenses, including the cost of your cell phone, your internet, your utilities, transportation. If your normal course of business, you're renting vehicles and just be careful not to duplicate the, the expenses on that 25% to the idle loan. And uh, they complement each other very well in a strategic manner. Next slide. Any eligible small business with 500 or fewer employees or no greater than number of employees set by your NAICS code, your primary NAICS code for your size standards. It includes nonprofits, veteran organizations, tribal concerns, sole proprietors, self-employed individuals, 1099s, independent contractors, Unfortunately, it does not include the 501C19 and uh, like the chambers and trade organizations and, uh, and it does include the tax exempt nonprofits 501C3. Tribal business concerns described in section 31B2C of the Small Business Administration Next slide. The structure of the Paycheck Protection Program. All loans under this program have the following identical features. Interest rate is 1%, yes, per annum, fixed. Maturity in two years. First payment deferred for six months. 100% guaranteed by SBA to the bank. You're dealing directly with a lender here and uh, ideally your lender. No collaterals required no personal guarantees, no borrower or lender fees payable to SBA, and no prepayment penalty. The forms needed, SBA Form 2483, and, uh, and their payroll documentation. You can obtain the form from your lender. If for whatever reason your lender is not participating, the send me an email and I will provide you a list of lenders that are participating, and that includes micro lenders and CDC lenders such as BCL, a CDC lender in Austin, and uh, and micro lender in Austin, People Fund, and the micro lender in San Antonio, uh, Lift Fund. Next slide, please. This is an example of the form. And uh, if you're able to ob obtain this PowerPoint, then there is your link to get the form. Otherwise, you can email me, and uh, my email will be shown at the end of the program. Yes, someone asked if there a spreadsheet. Next slide. Yes, there is. How much can you borrow? 
Under the Paycheck Protection Program, the maximum loan amount is the lesser of 10 million or an amount that will calculate using a payroll-based formula specified in the Act. Example, no employees uh, make more than 100,000. If, uh, if you have anybody that makes more than 100,000, just report them as 100,000. So let's say your annual payroll is 120,000 for all your employees. So then divided by 12, your average monthly payroll is 10,000. Multiply that by 2.5, that equals 25,000. Why 2.5? Well, if you recall, it covers eight weeks. And uh, so they're using the factor of 2.5 for two and a half months. So under this example, then the maximum loan amount is 25,000. And that's paid in full to you. Next slide. Under the Paycheck Protection Program, only one PP loan to eligible borrower. Forgiveness will be reduced if the full-time headcount declines or if salaries and wages decrease. Folks have asked me, what if I have some people that are on unemployment and don't want to come back? Well, you can replace them with other individuals to meet the headcount and, uh, and pay them the same amount as the others were paid uh, beforehand. Can you pay them more? Yes. Independent contractors do not count as employees for the purposes of the Payroll Protection Program loan forgiveness. However, they can apply for the PPP for themselves. Independent contractors have the ability to apply for this on their own. Next slide. Here's for the individual that asked your spreadsheet comparing the both. And uh, don't, I don't recommend use one or the other. Use both. Use both. Some folks don't want to get more into debt. I can understand that. But this attractive interest rate for businesses and nonprofits will, is much better than a conventional revolving line of credit, as well as the conditions under that. And uh, so I strongly recommend that because this recovery could be as much as a year to get back to the way your business was prospering beforehand. Next slide. Additional resources for your small business. Important resources. SBA has local resource partners. And, uh, and it's uh, remiss on this list that uh, Bear County is also a resource partner and a very strong partner. And the Southwest Texas Border SBDC Network, the SCORE chapters in San Antonio and Austin, the Women's Business Center of Lift Fund, the Veterans Business Outreach Center, and several other organizations that we work with, the Bear County, the City of San Antonio, the uh, City of Austin, and San Marcos, the City of Victoria, San Angelo, the, the Chambers of Commerce in our area, and uh, all the minority women chambers, and the Laredo Chamber, and uh, the San Antonio Chamber, and they're also our partners in this effort. A range of help during the downturn includes cash flow management, where they, you get free consulting from these folks, messaging, social media, to stay engaged with customers, how to revive your business using social media, import export financing, supply chain assistance, strategic planning and financial tune-up, preparing you to prosper after the desire and disaster, and planning for further disasters, risk management, insurance counseling. There's talk that this could possibly return in the fall, and so you'll get tips on how to prepare for that from our resource partners. Next slide, please. Here's the contact information for SCORE, the Women's Business Center, the Veterans Business Outreach Center, and the Small Business Development Center, in San Antonio, Austin, Laredo, and uh, in the Bear County, you obtained that from uh, from our uh, host, Renee Watson. I breeze through this quickly to allow for a time for questions and answers. And here we have frequently 
ask questions on these links, and um, or you could obtain that also from me. We update that frequently. How to calculate your loan amounts if uh, this example was not enough for you, and the PPP lender list and uh, by state. Next slide. This is our uh, public affairs information officer, if I'm not available. And my email is anthony.ruiz, R-U-I-Z, at sba.gov. That's the best way to reach me. And I am teleworking, and uh, but send me an email, anthony.ruiz at sba.gov. Renee, do we have time to uh, respond to questions? Uh, yes, the ones that are posted in the chat room. If James can read those or Stephen, and then he can, uh, or you can see them, uh, Mr. Ruiz, from starting from the top, if you want to answer some of them. Go okay. Back up to the top of the chat room. All right, so I just. And just scroll through them and start answering them. Okay. Many of them you referred to in your presentation. Can we get these slides sent? Is that possible, Renee? Yes, we'll get the slides sent. They're posted on our website. Uh, we've already put that in there. We'll post the video and the web uh, the slides. And then we made it, we sent the link or we posted the link to the SBA website to get the slides as well. Okay, very good. The. Uh... Once approved, how long does it take? It's take Francisco, it's taking much longer than expected, and uh, we appreciate your patience. And uh, the advance payments are going out this week on the idle loan, and the, uh, and the banks are also backed up and nationally. And so for the idle loan, it could be anywhere from a week to four weeks, and, uh, and with the banks as well. We found that on the payroll protection program, the community lenders and micro lenders are performing many, many more applications and loan dollars than the money center banks. And, and they're doing it much, much quicker. And so that's something that you should consider. And that includes the, uh, the credit unions. Someone here, uh, Galloway, it took him a month to get his, his uh, advance, yes, uh, I'm aware of that, and, uh, and that's, that's the way it is. It, uh, is it too late to apply for EIDL loan or PPP? Uh, for the uh, first round of the EIDL loan, yes, the portal is closed. The PPP, no, it's not too late. It's in the second round, but you better hurry before funds run out. And uh, someone says they received their advance on Friday and just appeared in their account. And uh, very good. It doesn't mean that everybody will get their money on Friday, and that's going to happen all week. Your, uh, somebody's company in uh, Illinois, and it works from Mexico, from Texas, can company apply for this loan? And uh, your headquarters is in Illinois, and uh, you can apply. If you have a lender here, you can apply here. And, uh, and, and you're applying for your EIDL loan to SBA, so you could be any place in the USA to apply for the EIDL loan. Uh, next question, any forecast of when the portal for EIDL will reopen? Uh, we don't know yet, and uh, a wild guess would be a week to two weeks, and uh, Right now, they're still processing from round one. Uh, Mr. Ruiz, this is James on Renee's team. Uh, James Massey, SBD. I just want to state out loud here, it's been written a couple times in the chat, but if you haven't seen it, um, we're limited on time, uh, both for Mr. Ruiz as well as for Ms. Williams, who has her presentation next. I just want to remind everybody, if you state your question in the chat and it was not read aloud and answered, if you have your contact information somewhere in that chat, uh, we will be following up. We're going to have a transcript available to 
uh, every speaker. And uh, we're going to make sure that we follow up with every question asked. So don't get frustrated if you asked a question a long time ago and we're addressing the most recent ones. Everyone's going to get an answer. We'll be following up with everybody on here. We just asked somewhere in the chat, please include your contact information so we have a point of contact to follow up with. Mr. Ruiz, I think hey. we have one more question. We need to move on to uh, Terry. I'm going to go right now to Terry. Uh, sure, we can. Uh, Terry, are you ready? I just unmuted her, Jean. Okay, I had to unmute myself. Okay. Yes, I am ready. Renee, do you want to introduce Terry Williams with SBDC? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, Terry is a great leader, and she's a part of the community of, um, that's been doing this and one of our resource partners for almost as long as I've been doing it. I've been at the county 20 years. So Terry now has been given the awesome responsibility by the UTSA uh, Institute for Economic Development uh, under the auspices of, of the Small Business Development Center to lead the effort for the COVID recovery accelerator during these times. So she has a tremendous staff and resources on the ground to be able to help business owners to do and be a part of the programs that Mr. Ruiz just covered that the SBA has. The center also has uh, opportunities for counseling and other supportive services for long term. So with that, I'll welcome Terry uh, Williams, um, who is Associate Regional Director, uh, to, to be able to uh, make her presentation. Thank you, Terry, for joining us. Thank you so much, Renee. Thanks for having me. And uh, thank you, um, Mr. Ruiz, for that great presentation. Feeds right into uh, my presentation as a resource partner I know a lot of information was um, provided to you on the what I might call the, the, the technical side of it. And sometimes it can get to be overwhelming. And folks, you know, know, okay, so some folks have been, you know, successful, like I read in the chat. Um, someone got their advance, which is great, which is excellent. But we still find a lot of folks that are kind of of uh, 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 struggling to find out where they can get assistance, are they doing it right, and uh, things like that. So um, this this uh, first slide has a lot of the contact information. I apologize, the blue on blue, not sure if you can read that well, but, but I will um, go over it again later because that includes our um, website, that has direct links and information. It includes our email um, and phone number. So if we can go to the next slide. Uh, talk about what this UTSA SBDC COVID Business Recovery Accelerator does. It's actually a, what we call a specialty center of the Southwest Texas SBDC network. Our vision is, of course, to be recognized as the leading organization that helps small businesses through what we call the four R's, okay? Relief, which is what you've been hearing about all of the financial products. Rebooting, um, you know, making changes. Are there changes that, of course, there are changes that businesses might need to make um, in, in, in light of this pandemic. Recovery and resiliency. We want to make sure that after things kind of get back to normal that you can continue um, your business through any other type of disaster during and after uh, this pandemic. So that's really what we're focusing on, not just getting you the financial assistance, but making sure that your business can continue um, to, to thrive through anything. Um, and I'll talk a, a little bit more about the SBDC um, uh, network. A little bit was presented to you. But on the next slide, I have, um, it, there we go. <laughs> on the next slide, talking um, a little bit about, okay, what is this accelerator again? So you probably heard the different stimulus packages um, that Congress passed. One of them included additional funds to SBA on top of what was already previously allocated. But these funds, um, and um, Mr. Rees mentioned the CARES Act. So CARES, um, COVID 
um, coronavirus aid relief economic supplement. It's actually what CARES is an acronym for. That act included about $192 million for SBDC functions, small business development centers. In Texas, there are four, because we're such a big state, right? There are four networks. Our network covers um, 79 counties, okay? And I'll uh, go over that in a minute. But our operations are supported by SBA funding. What we did is develop a call center of operations that utilizes the following methods of, con of contact. So this phone number um, for assistance, anyone can call um, that number. They'll get our first line of, of contact. Okay, they ask you a few questions about your needs and then get you connected to one of our business advisors that can help walk you through that process. Um, you can also email us at the email that's listed right there. Um, we wanted to try to keep it simple. Business recovery at utsa.edu. And then you can find all of this information as well on our website that's listed there as well. Hours of operation right now is Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now, of course, you can email anytime. You can go to the website anytime. Um, we can go to the next slide. Since we have started, we've responded to over 600 businesses. And that, that's, um, that's actually as of last Wednesday. I need to get updated numbers. But um, 600 businesses and over 80 emails. A lot of the emails we're, we're, we're finding, as well as the calls, are from everywhere across the country. Uh, we were the first um, SBDC to actually implement um, this type of uh, assistance program. So that's probably why we've been getting calls from uh, even as far away as San Diego, Las Vegas, Buffalo, New York, uh, Florida, um, um, all over the country. So. I mentioned we serve 79 counties. These 79 counties cover, of course, San Antonio, um, Alpine, Austin, Corpus, Eagle Pass, El Paso, okay, as far west as El Paso, Laredo, the real, uh oh, excuse me for the misspelling. I don't think I got the latest version back to them, but the Rio Grande Valley, San Angelo, and, and Victoria. So, uh, we have field centers, okay, uh, field center SBDCs in all of those cities. We at UTSA, uh, we are the lead center. So on the uh, next slide, please. So what can, we, what can we actually do for businesses? How can we help you uh, with relief, recovery, um, uh, rebooting and resiliency. Well, we provide counseling, education, training, and business advising to small businesses. So again, we've heard a lot about the financial resources. Uh, we get a lot of questions. We have received a lot of questions on, for instance, what's the status of, of my loan? What's the status of my PPP? What's the status of my uh, idle loan? Um, how do I navigate through um, the site? Um, you know, what's needed? We have advisors that have extensive backgrounds in financial um, consulting, um, some who were uh, formerly in the banking industry, some that were formerly small business owners that can help walk you through, through all of that. And, and whether they are SBA, um, related financial products or non-SBA loan, loan programs. We can help you with that too. Um, protection of employees and customers from communicable diseases such as COVID-19. So we have, um, again, advisors who are well-versed in safety measures, and this is what this falls under, safety measures, and not just um, COVID-19, but other um, employee related safety measures. Um, the next slide, please. 
Next slide, please. Oh, there we are. Um, so we know typically that the type of disasters we um, normally see are um, weather-related disasters, okay? But again, long-term or short-term, understanding and preparing for the effects of man-made disasters, um, cybersecurity-related um, disasters as well. We can help with web integration of business services. So this is something that um, you may not be set up that way or may not have been set up. But now, uh, through this pandemic, it's almost a, a necessity to be able to do business um, through websites or through online training. Continuity of operations through planning, telework, and remote management, again, in um, the situation that we're in now, a lot of folks are trying to operate their business remotely or have their employees um, continue to work remotely. Um, UTSA, we started working remotely uh, back on March 20th. Protection of small business intellectual property, mitigation of cyber threats through cybersecurity training, mitigate the effects of reduced travel and outside activities. So, all of the things that I just mentioned are services or um, advising that we can help with. Now, you may be asking, okay, that's great. What does this cost me? Okay, it doesn't cost you anything. Okay, these are, um, um, what I first mentioned is that we are funded through SBA. SBA is funded high through your federal tax dollars, okay? Um, so there is, and we don't like to use the term free, but all of these services are no cost to you. Okay, um, the next slide. So what, we're, what we are measured by, okay, um, and all of this has to result in some particular outcome. We're not just about the the numbers or, or, or um, how many calls we get, but what are the end results? What are the outcomes, okay? How did we help you with capital assistance? What type of assistance did we provide to you? Um, small, business, small businesses assisted through either telephone or online pro, um, platforms. Right now, of course, we're providing the advising through Zoom or other or WebEx or Teams or other um, platforms. Um, how many hours were spent with you advising and training on your business? And then capital infusion. How many businesses actually receive financing? That's part of the results and outcome. And then how much um, was that? Now, one point I want to make is that all of the, so say you sit down with an advice, of course, you're going to have to kind of delve into your um, business activity, um, your finances. All of this is confidential. It is not shared with, with anyone. Um, what is shared, but in aggregate, okay, are the results and outcomes to the SBA, okay, in our reports that's generated. Um, the next slide, please. We also look at unique clients served on a long-term basis, okay? So we're not just about the short-term, getting you the, 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 um, the financing. But as I mentioned before, we want to make sure that you stay in business, okay? Um, and help you through that. So we want to look at that long-term relationship as, as well through relief, reboot, recovery, and resiliency. And then job support it, okay? Um, if you created new jobs, that's great. We want to know about it, okay? But at a minimum, hopefully um, you were able to at least retain the employees or the jobs that you had available. The next slide. So I'm going to quickly 
kind of take you through some screenshots here so you know what's what's on the website of course this is the basic information that's the landing page of the txspdc.org slash business recovery site um the next page i'm sorry next slide so on this on this slide um again it's basic information but if you look at if you look at the information and say yes i'd like to have an advisor meet with me um you know see how we can work through this uh ppp or work through um, um other sources uh financial assistance so where it says click here to request confidential individual no cost advising is where you can do just that okay on the website you can click there it'll take you to another screen where you basically complete the intake form um, we receive it and then assign you to an advisor um, the next slide so on this again um, this is still on our website our web page and these are the areas that has more detail as far as what we can uh, what types of services and it it also has links to other resources as well so if, if you would go to the um, click on the finding and S click on SBA it takes you to that page that um, Anthony mentioned I think in the first part of his presentation it may have been the second or third slide so we are intricately connected to SBA we're not trying to give you something different than what um, um, SBA has but just help walk you through that process we also have a list of of um, other funding that um, includes lift fund that includes um, some of the banks that includes um, uh, people fund so it's not just um, limited to to SBA but other funding um, sources that's out there employer resources cybersecurity um, the next slide safety as I mentioned before safety getting through um, any type of disease pandemic as well as other safety issues um, training will be populating that um, section with all the webinars um, cyber training um, um, QuickBooks training, um, all sorts of training that can help you with your business, and then success stories. Okay, um, what has, um, what did other businesses um, go through? How have they been successful in, 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 in navigating through the PPP or or the idle loan or or getting their business restructured? We always like to share success stories that you give us permission to share and the next slide so again if you click on funding options that page should be um, familiar to you um, that's the page that uh, mr ruiz basically talked um, spoke through um, regarding sba information um, one thing that i wanted to mention um, he mentioned NAICS codes. Um, I don't know if, if everyone is familiar with North American Industrial Classification System code, but, but typically, as um, he mentioned, small businesses is any business that's uh, 500 or less or that fits the SBA size standard as related to your NAICS code. If you don't know what your NAICS code is, we can help you with that as well because it depends some in some cases um, based on your it's based on your industry okay so it may be based on um, your small business size designation may be based on whether you're a um, uh, oh, maybe based on revenue or number of employees um, next slide please So that's basically all the information that I have to share um, today. I know you, uh, Renee, will make copies of these slides available um, to you. I'd also like to um, introduce. I think they might still be on the 
on the call, but Jaime Martinez and um, Deidre Portillo is um, um, on the staff helping me lead this effort as well. Um, uh, we're adding additional financial um, advisors um, and other folks to um, help with the influx of folks that might need help. And of course, um, partnering with a lot of our resource partners out there. Again, um, um, I'd like to thank Renee Watson in Bear County for, for doing this and look for further partnerships um, in the future. And I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Terry. Uh, so Zoom webinars have kind of become the way of life uh, these past couple of weeks. There's a raise hand feature uh, available if you open up the participants, if you look to see who's actually on uh, these webinars. If we could, sorry, I muted myself there. If we can get people to raise their hands, what I'll do is I'll start to uh, call on you, unmute your line, and get you guys to ask questions. So um, let me real quick make sure that Mr. Ruiz is still on the line in case questions come his way. Uh, I'm going to unmute you, Mr. Ruiz. Uh, Mr. Ruiz, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Okay, sir. Uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to open up a Q&A feature with folks that want to raise their hands, ask questions. Uh, I'm not sure if these are going to come to you or Terry. We're going to ask whoever's raising their hand to identify who they want to uh, ask their question to and then start. So first person uh, looks like Frenchie. Um, I, I apologize. I'm going to butcher your last name. Uh, but Frenchie, I'm going to unmute your line. Are you with us, Frenchie? I am. It's Frenchie Santini. How you doing? This Santini, is hi. Uh, glad you're on with us, ma'am. So uh, who's your question to? My question is to both, actually. First, I would like to speak to Mr. Ruiz about the SBA. Um, and my question is, if you have multiple businesses, can you apply for multiple businesses? And Ms. Terry, I would like to ask you if you already have a UTSA advisor but have not been connecting with that advisor for um, almost six months, uh, do you have to reapply to the UTSA um, procurement section? Mr. Ruiz, you want to take that first question? Yes. It's, uh, the answer is yes. If each business has its unique EIN number. Does okay. that answer your question? Hello? Yes, it does. No, I was trying to unmute. Yes, it does. It does have. Outstanding. EIN. Yes. Sir. Okay. And then uh, Terry, if you want to take the second part. Yes. Yeah, so if you already have an, an advisor, it depends on. So. You don't have to, in particular, when you apply or, or reapply. You should still be in our um, uh, management information system. And we would just, however, depending on which center, so you mentioned procurement. It may have been an advisor with our PTAC, Procurement Technical Assistance Center. We would then um, connect you with an advisor in our business rec um, business recovery accelerator. So there might just be a matter of updating your um, intake form information and we'll connect you with an advisor with the accelerator. Okay, the next person I see here is Juan. Uh, Juan, you had your hand raised and I now have your line unmuted. Are you with us, sir? Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Juan. We can all hear you. Uh, who's your question to? And then state your question, sir. It's for Mr. Reeves uh, regarding the IDL. Uh, I received, you know, the, the, the $1,000. I'm self-employed uh, last week. Now, will somebody be contacting me? And can some of the proceeds, when we were asking for the, for, for the loan, uh, can some of those proceeds be to cover current credit card expenses? that are part of day-to-day -day running of the business for purchasing inventory. Uh, basically, the entire business runs through the credit card. Uh, can those EIDL monies be to pay down that credit card? One, your advance can be used 
for your discretion. And, and again, that, that ends up being a grant. And yes, you will be contacted by a, a, a loan officer in our disaster section and uh, for your idle loan. Does that effectively answer your question? Uh, it, it does, and uh, I guess to follow up with that, uh, during the loan app, uh, the loan process, when they reach back, do, should we start making our list of what we want the loan for and what expenses they're going to be going towards? Is it more but, like is it a working capital loan? Uh, it, it's going to be a term loan for your working capital. And uh, but it's it's based upon your expenses. What you want to have get re in the ready is uh, your two to three years tax return, depending on how long you've been in business, and your uh, financial statements for your business, income statement, and balance sheet for the last uh, two to three years, and the latest interim the, that would say March ending and also have the March ending for last year so they can compare. And, uh, the, and that will help to determine how much you're going to get. Okay, so then based on those numbers, they'll calculate the loan amount. We're not able to request an X amount for a loan. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay. They all analyze uh, your, your expense profile and uh, and from there determine it. But you can, if you feel you've been grossly shortchanged, you can ask for f uh, formal reconsideration. Okay, thank you, Mr. Reese. That answered my question. And 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 if I could just kind of chime in there, you um, just you know normally you might want to make sure that you have um, all of those you know documents at at the ready anyway. And, you know, if you don't have an advisor, I would um, highly recommend that because there have been instances where uh, businesses have come to us because um, either they did not submit something correctly or their information was not um, uh, calculated by their, by their bank properly. And what they, sh they, what they should have received was less than what was submitted. And after that, there's really, there really wasn't a way to amend anything. They either had to reject it and start over. And you don't want to be I in that situation. Follow up with, with, with uh, Terry's comment. If, uh, if you don't have a strong financial accounting acumen, I strongly recommend uh, our resource partners, and I'll, I have worked with SBDCs around the country for decades, and we're blessed. We have one of the best in the country, if not the best. And uh, so you're going to get very, very good uh, small business advising from uh, the SBDC and uh, under this accelerator program. Thank, thank you very much. And I, if I can ask one more, I was lucky, one of the lucky people that did get my PPP. And uh, at the end of the four, the, the, the two months pay period, I know you're not supposed to go double dip into the EIDL, but once the PPP money runs out, can some of the EIDL then, then be applied for payroll once the PPP is out? Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. I don't want to take more time from anybody else. Oh, appreciate your questions, Juan, and uh, thank you to the presenters for staying on. We, did, we told them that there wouldn't be a Q&A portion, and here we are throwing them a curveball, getting them to stick on for a Q&A. So appreciate you guys uh, rolling with the punches with us. Uh, Benny Martinez, I see your hand raised. I'm going to unmute your line. Benny, can you hear us? Can you respond? Hey, I hear you fine. Hey, Benny. Uh, you are live. Okay. I, I am using a payroll company, uh, a staffing company for my employees. In fact, I'm an I'm a uh, an employee of my own company, and I was told I don't since I use a staffing company, uh, I am not 
eligible for the PPP loans? It's like a, a leased employee. I have management control, but they, the, uh, the, the employees technically work for uh, Unique. Uh, Mr. Ruiz, can you take that question? Yes. Um, sir, you being a business owner, I don't know, I could talk with your banker uh, or your credit union, whoever told you that, because you as a business owner are eligible at minimum. And uh, what is your legal structure, sir? Are you a corporation, LLC? I'm an S Corp. S Corp, yeah, even more so. Uh, now, do you receive a a salary from your corporation? Through unique uh, staffing. I I do not file any uh, um, the uh, quarter the nine forty ones or any forms. Everything is handled by uh, unique staffing. Okay, but you're the owner of a company, right? Yes, sir. Okay, as the owner of a company, uh, you should be eligible yourself. And uh, now, did you file a Schedule C on your tax returns? Uh, or something is that, to that. A corporation? Yes, you filed it, so that shows. And how many years have you been in business? 16. Uh, send me an email so I have your contact information, and then we could work through this, okay? Do you have my email? Yes, I copied it down when you gave it out earlier. So let's pursue this further offline, and I will help you resolve this. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, Benny. Uh, I got one more question here from a Lisa. Uh, Lisa says, Lisa Dell laptop. Uh, Lisa, can you hear us? I sure can. Thank you for uh, giving me a moment of your time. I was curious, and, and this is probably going to Mr. Ruiz, um, what will we be required to show proof that 75% of the PPP funds have been applied directly towards salaries, towards employee salaries. You're asking why 75%? No. What, what type of proof, what type of reporting or proof will we need to show as evidence that the people 75% minimum will have been applied towards salaries? Um, you, if, if you're doing your own payroll, your payroll run and uh, from your computer. And uh, if you're, using a, a payroll company, then um, the, uh, they provide you that information. Does that adequately answer your question? I think so, I'll pass this on to my bookkeeper, but I think so, thank you. Good, good, now, but understand this also, it does not only include the gross cost of payroll, it includes sick leave, uh, any, any other, benefits that you have for your employees and includes that. If you want me to send you a list of those items, email me. I'm glad you provide you that so that you don't shortchange yourself. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we don't have any other folks. Ready? You're not supposed to meet anybody at church. Why? So, Anthony. Oh. Terry, uh, I was getting chatter, so I muted everybody. I don't think oh. Anthony had a chance to hear your question. Could you ask again? So, um, so James, I was going to to mention a um, um, couple of things uh, regarding the gentleman. I think it was Benny Martinez. Oh, that Benny. Had, yes. Mm -hmm, that had the um, payroll. Question. So, Deidre Patillo is also on the call. I think she had responded to um, his question also in 
in the chat and she's um, um, one of our advisors that certified in HR as well. So her response um, was also as long as the staffing company that he's using does not, he needs to make sure that they're not trying to claim them as employees, the, the, the people that he has working for him, but through that payroll company that they're not trying to claim him as employees as, as well. Deidre, are you um, still on the call? I don't know if she's muted. But um, secondly... Uh, she, she was muted. I am unmuting her right now. Okay. Deidre, are you with us? Yes, this is Deidre. Hi, you're unmuted. Uh, Terry just asked you a direct question, ma'am, uh, regarding the <laughs> question posed in the chat. So um, the SBA's FAQs are really helpful and they specifically address this particular issue. Um, it may depend upon the contract you have with the staffing agency, P, you know, professional employment um, organization, pro payroll processing company, you know, there, there are many names and many types of relationships, uh, but there are specific directions on information you can obtain from that service provider um, to show those individuals uh, as being reflective of your workforce. Now, if that company, um, if, if, you, if you maintain a more of a workforce uh, that is employed by various businesses, that might be different because that leasing company, that, pay, that, that um, employing company may actually be the primary employer of record of those individuals. So it would be you know, best to contact the payroll company, look at the uh, SBA FAQ number 10, um, and that, that's maintain whatever version of the FAQs, but certainly the most current one, which I posted uh, in the chat, the link to the SBA's website. It, it details the information necessary, uh, as long as those individuals are only being claimed for the purposes of one application. Thanks, Deidre. And um, then lastly, Anthony, I saw in the chat there were a couple of, of um, questions related to wanting to know about federal contracting opportunities related to, to, to COVID. And I could probably put this um, in the chat, but um, they can find, you can find opportunities at beta, B-E-T-A dot SAM dot gov as well as contact, um, and I'm gonna give you a name because I think she's on the call as well, Susanna Monroe with the PTAC, and she can help you work through, uh, uh, identify federal contract opportunities and work through that. Um, you can reach her again, I'll put it in the chat, but you can find information at ptac.iedtexas.org or reach her at 458-2458, thanks. Thank you, Terry. Uh, so we had two more questions and I just want to remind everybody we are limited on time. Uh, we thank Terry Williams as well as Mr. Anthony Reeves for staying on with us. Uh, appreciate all the insights and the valuable experience that they have. Uh, and again, we, we're kind of throwing them a curveball and taking a live Q&A because we were pretty adamant saying we won't take questions. So I really appreciate you guys staying with us. I have two more questions I'm gonna try and get to before we end our time here. The first one, uh, they've been waiting a while, they're health analytics is how you're coming across on my uh, participant view here. Uh, health analytics, I apologize, but I, I don't have a name for you. I did unmute you, can you hear me? Yes, I can, no problem. Okay, uh, so first identify yourself, then let us know who you're asking the question to, and go ahead and state your question. All right, my name is Jade Heverly Campbell, and this uh, I have two quick questions for either of the presenters, and thanks so much for taking my question. Um, the first one is for businesses that didn't experience a drop in income until mid-March, how will we be able to document that in our idle applications? And then the second one is, if 2019 tax returns haven't been filed yet, can businesses apply for the idle using their 2018 tax returns? On the tax return issue, yes, you could still file. On uh, the, 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 the payroll, can, can you repeat that issue again? Sure, our uh, business didn't experience a drop in income until mid-March when all uh, business activities halted. So I'm wondering how I can document that on the idle because uh, 
documenting income and expenses through March of 2019 and comparing that through March of 2020 wouldn't show much of a drop yet. Uh, your, through your bank, you could obtain uh, the deposits from your revenues and uh, or the bank balances each day before you the beginning bank balance each day and uh, so that should that should be good hard data okay so we can submit information past the end of march to document that right okay got it thank you we had one additional question but um that individual did lower their hand uh, let me unmute them real quick. Sir, I, I noticed that you had a question. You lowered your hand. Do you still want to address that question? The last uh, I, I sure did lower my hand. Uh, the question was answered by Terry. Um, it was regarding federal contract opportunities, and I saw that she responded in the chat room. So thank you very much. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Anthony, as well. You're welcome. And the PTAC folks are outstanding. <laughs> yeah, every contact that we make um, on, on my, I have our department web uh, staff up right now, and I can tell you every individual that we come into contact with, we're going to refer them to Terry's shop. Uh, we're going to refer them to our PTEC partner as well. We're going to refer them to the SBA. Uh, can't say enough about the tremendous partnership that Terry Wooms and Mr. Ruiz on the call right now offer to us. And that's embodied and seen right now that we told them no Q&A and here they are taking questions anyway. <laughs> so with that said, this, this is going to be the end. Uh, I can't stress enough. If you had a question that did not get addressed or if you didn't have a chance to raise your hand and ask that question, type it out in the chat room. Go ahead and make sure your contact information is listed somewhere in the chat. If you stated it earlier, you're good to go. If you have a question, I'm going to leave the webinar open for a little bit longer so everybody can get their questions in. A transcript will be provided to the presenters for follow-up. So anything that you want to ask, go ahead and get it in there, and we'll be following up individually with you and make sure it gets in the right hands. Uh, so with that said, again, um, this is the staff, SBD. Uh, this was Terry and Anthony's presentation, but we're the ones who put it together for you. We're going to have a, a series of webinars this week. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be hosting Mayor Bibliotech with Director Laura Cole who's gonna talk about small business resources that Bibliotech offers, uh, which online library, first of its kind, uh, how you can access and leverage its resources for your small business. On Wednesday, we're gonna be hosting tax assessor collector, Albert Uresti, uh, all taxes. Talking taxes with the assessor collector is actually what that one's gonna be. Uh, on Thursday, we're gonna bring in uh, Charles Johnson, the director of the South Central Texas Regional Certification Agency. If you are a small business on this call, you most likely know about the acronym, the RCA, or you've met with Charles. We're going to have him on talk about certification, hub certification, how to leverage what it does for you. And then on Friday, for those asking about contracting opportunities, we're actually going to be hosting the new Bear County purchasing agent, Patty Torres, and then uh, Aaron from purchasing. Aaron on the purchasing, as well as myself, be hosting uh, how to go about finding contract opportunities and how to leverage our CDMS system. So with that. That closes our presentation. I appreciate everybody being on here. All lines will be muted, but you will be able to type out your questions. If you have any more, make sure your contact was listed somewhere in the chat. Type out your questions. We'll be open for just a little while. Thank everybody for being on here, especially again, Terry Williams, Anthony Ruiz. Thank you. Thank you all for your continued partnership. Thank you. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Likewise, Renee, thank you very much for your leadership and inspiration to our community. Thank you, James.